Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Digital Radio Mondial. In this presentation, we'll provide a short technical introduction to Digital Radio Mondial, or DRM. Even in the age of cell phones and the internet, broadcast radio continues to play an important role worldwide. Compared to cellular or internet, broadcast radio has minimal infrastructure requirements. It uses simple receivers which can be mobile, portable, and or battery powered. It also has minimal cost to the listener. Receivers are generally inexpensive and there are no subscription fees. Unlike internet and cellular, broadcast radio is also not capacity limited. It doesn't matter if one person or a million people are listening simultaneously. And broadcast radio is also very important in distributing information during emergencies or disasters. Until very recently, broadcast radio used exclusively analog modulation, that is, AM or FM. These are simple to implement, but reception is sometimes limited by fading, multipath, noise, etc. And although audio quality on FM is acceptable by modern standards, it's often quite poor on AM, both for medium and shortwave broadcasts. Analog broadcasts are also limited in that they generally do not transfer non-audio information, although in some cases, very small amounts of digital information can be added to analog FM broadcast signals. Another limitation of analog is that it only offers a single program per frequency. Digital Radio Mondial, commonly abbreviated DRM, is intended to replace analog radio broadcasting. It's a non-proprietary, open Etsy standard that does not require any licensing, and DRM is promoted by the DRM Consortium. Compared to analog broadcasts, DRM provides considerably improved and more consistent audio quality. In addition, it supports text-based information and an emergency warning functionality. DRM is also more spectrally efficient, allowing both more stations in a given bandwidth, as well as multiple audio channels or streams per frequency. DRM is also more energy efficient or green than traditional analog broadcasting, often needing less than half the power to cover a similar geographical area. The bandwidths and frequencies used by DRM were chosen to fit into the existing broadcast band plans, including long and medium wave, short wave or HF, and VHF. Broadcasts in the frequency ranges below 30 MHz are sometimes called DRM30, or AM band broadcasts, and these are intended to provide wider area coverage, particularly the HF or short wave band. Broadcasts at VHF are sometimes called DRM Plus or FM band broadcasts and are for local or regional coverage. Although the designations DRM 30 and DRM Plus are widely used, it's worth noting that these terms have recently been deprecated by the DRM consortium. Since different band plans use different channel widths, DRM supports a wide range of bandwidths from 4.5 kHz to 100 kHz. In general, the wider the bandwidth, the better the audio quality. In the traditional AM medium wave broadcast bands, DRM normally uses traditional AM spacing, that is 9 kHz or 10 kHz. Bandwidths such as 4.5 kHz or 20 kHz are so-called half and double widths which allow either greater station density or better quality, respectively. In the VHF or FM bands, DRM uses the 100 kHz spacing that's used for FM broadcasts in most parts of the world. Another way in which DRM can optimize frequency allocations is single frequency networks. In a single frequency network, multiple transmitters send the same DRM program simultaneously on the same frequency. In this example, we can see how the signals from multiple transmitters would overlap, and this provides two major benefits. First, it improves signal strength in the overlapping areas, 
and it can also be used to reduce or eliminate dead zones where reception is difficult or impossible using only a single transmitter. Single frequency networks are also more efficient from a regulatory point of view. Since large geographical areas can be covered using only a single frequency, often with only a single spectrum license. DRM is a digital technology, and DRM signals are transmitted using a special form of orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, commonly abbreviated OFDM. In OFDM, the channel or bandwidth is divided into many, typically hundreds or thousands, of separate but closely spaced subcarriers, each of which is individually modulated. Although these subcarriers are very close together, they're transmitted in such a way so as not to interfere with each other, and this is what is meant by orthogonal. Orthogonal frequency division multiplexing is widely used in many digital wireless technologies, including cellular and Wi-Fi. It allows flexible channel bandwidths, since the bandwidth is determined by the number or spacing of the subcarriers. OFDM is also robust against signal fading or other impairments caused by changing propagation. Individual DRM subcarriers are modulated using QAM, or Quadrature Amplitude Modulation. Like most other digital modulation schemes, QAM can be implemented with different modulation orders. This refers to the number of symbols or states. For example, a 16 QAM signal has 16 possible states, and a 64 QAM signal has 64 possible states. In general, the higher the modulation order, the higher the effective data, or bit rate. But keep in mind that higher modulation orders also require a cleaner RF environment, or better signal-to-noise ratios. We'll come back to this point again on the next slide. DRM signals also use something called forward error correction, or FEC, to protect against bit errors. And this protection can be applied equally to all bits, or it may be applied unequally, in that the more important bits receive greater error protection. DRM defines five different sets of modulation parameters, which map to different propagation conditions found in different bands. These parameters include not only bandwidth, but also the number of symbols per frame, the spacing of the OFDM subcarriers, the amount of interleaving, etc. These sets of parameters are called robustness modes, each designated by a letter. For HF and below, modes A through D map to progressively more challenging environments. Mode A provides the highest bit rate, but assumes good propagation conditions, such as line of sight or surface wave. Mode D, on the other hand, would be most suitable for more challenging propagation environments. Note that there's also a special robustness mode, mode E, that's only used for signals transmitted at VHF. DRM uses three different logical channels to transfer the bits modulated onto the OFDM subcarriers. These channels are the fast access channel, the service description channel, and the main service channel. Let's take a couple of minutes to go over each of these channels and explain their roles in DRM transmissions. The fast access channel conveys the information needed to demodulate the DRM signal, such as the OFDM signal properties and the robustness mode we just described. It also indicates the modulation order of the STC and the MSC, as well as selection information, such as service ID, language, program type, etc. Note that the fast access channel is encoded using QPSK, or 4QAM, which is the lowest possible QAM modulation order. Recall that lower modulation orders provide higher reliability. This is important because if the FAC can't be properly decoded by the receiver, the receiver won't be able to demodulate the other two channels. The service description channel may be encoded using QPSK or may use the higher order 16 QAM modulation. This is signaled in the FAC. The purpose of the STC is to convey information needed 
to decode the MSC, which we'll discuss on the next slide. This information includes the structure of the DRM frames, various descriptions and labels, and the protection level we mentioned earlier. It also contains things such as the time and date and information about how the audio was encoded. The last channel is the main service channel, which contains both audio and text data combined into a multiplex signal. This represents the programs or user data that are heard or seen by the end user. This information can be a combination of up to four streams. These streams are usually all independent audio programs, but could also contain data. The MSC is encoded using either 16 QAM or 64 QAM, the later providing even higher data rates. And as we've seen, the MSC modulation order is signaled via the fast access channel. Higher modulation order is helpful in the MSC because it carries large amounts of primarily user data, that is, the actual program or content. Studio audio and data streams are combined into a single multiplex by something called a DRM content server. This information is packaged using a process called the Multiplex Distribution Interface, or MDI. The resulting package includes signaling information, such as the FAC and SDC, in addition to the audio and text data. This multiplex is then conveyed to a DRM modulator using something called the Distribution and Communication Protocol, or DCP. The DRM modulator is often co-located with the transmitter, but DCP could also be used to send the multiplex to multiple DRM modulators, such as when implementing a single frequency network. Rather than using live broadcast signals, DRM receivers are most often designed and tested using vector signal generators to create user-defined DRM streams. The DRM signals are created and streamed in real time using MDI and DCP data, as just discussed on the previous slide. This MDI DCP data can be provided in the form of an internal file or may be streamed into the generator from an external content server. The vector signal generator then transmits the modulated RF signal to the receiver either over a direct cable connection or radiated using an antenna. In addition to live streaming, DRM signals can also be created using fixed, predefined arbitrary waveform or ARB files. And finally, note that some vector signal generators can also add noise and or interferes to the generated DRM signal, allowing for more realistic test scenarios or testing under challenging conditions. Let's end with a brief summary. Digital Radio Mondial, or DRM, is an open standard for digital audio broadcasting at frequencies from LF through VHF. One of the greatest advantages of DRM is that it can be used with existing band plans and channel allocations. Other important advantages of DRM include high audio quality, the ability to transfer multiple streams of audio or data on a single frequency, emergency alert messages, etc. DRM uses flexible modulation schemes or robustness modes to adapt transmission to the different propagation conditions commonly found in different frequency bands. And this is made possible by the use of OFDM. User data and signaling is combined into a single multiplex using MDI, and this multiplex is then transferred to a modulator using DCP. And lastly, design and testing of DRM receivers is most often done using vector signal generators, which can produce a user-defined DRM signal together with noise and other impairments. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Digital Radio Mondial. If you'd like to learn more about broadcast radio standards, how receivers are tested, or about vector signal generators from Rodi and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at rodi-schwartz.com.